So guys, I'm gonna take you up to the roof with me. We're gonna run a little bit of an experiment um, with a rooftop unit running in two stages of heat. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let it run in two stages of heat for a bit, kill the power, all right? So there's no fan, and we're gonna watch that residual heat from the heat exchanger take that cabinet temperature and skyrocket. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to fill you in on a bit of a problem I had with this building last year. All right, what was happening was, okay, so this building's about 30 feet high and we heat it and cool it with rooftop units. So what was happening in the dead of winter, the coldest part of winter, all the rooftops, there's about 15 of them in full bore heating, all right? And we think a power blip shut down the machine, all right? The temperature started to rise in the cabinet and trip the manual reset limit that's inside the heat exchanger section. Now these are York rooftops, the control board has a built-in time delay after a power outage. If you kill the power and turn it back on, there's a time delay there. All right, if we got rid of that time delay and there was a five second power blip and the machine came back on and the fan started right away, we may not have had that issue. So what we did is we custom customized the wiring for these units to bring the fan back on, basically bypassing the delay and we ran the wiring through the overload. So the overload will still kill the fan if there's a problem, but we're bypassing the delay in the control board. So if there's a power blip, the fan comes on right away and we avoid we avoid ever having that possibility of tripping on limit because we don't have the airflow. So I'm gonna take you on the roof and I'm gonna show you what happens when you lose a fan in a heat exchanger section of a rooftop, but it would be the same with a furnace or any type of heating unit. You lose airflow, your temperature spikes. Okay, right now the BAS has this unit calling for two stages of heating and it's been running in two stage heat for about an hour and a half now trying to get the space to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So at the deck we have about 75 degree air roughly. All right, we have 120 degrees supply air, so we got about 45 degrees across that heat exchanger. There's my probe right into the door there. Supply air door. Move back so I can show you guys. So let's shut the fan down and see what happens to the temperature on this thermometer. So I just killed the fan. So let's see what happens to this temperature. All right, so over the last three or four minutes, we've actually managed to climb up to about 165 degrees. Now that's just residual heat from the heat exchanger without the fan running. So once we get in that 190, 195 range, we're in that high limit zone where we could eventually or potentially trip that limit. Now, this is the only unit in this vicinity that's running. So imagine on a really cold day outside, um, all 15 units in this warehouse running uh, the deck It's gonna get around probably 80 degrees because that that warm air is not being pushed to the floor the way it should be and Then we kill the power To all of the fans and we kill all airflow in the warehouse You could see how there's a potential there to um, Trigger the high limit So check this out guys um, after that machine was off for about five minutes with no airflow, the residual heat rising up off the heat exchanger actually tripped this manual reset high limit switch. All right. Um, my Type K thermocouple was just sitting 
inside the panel, probably somewhere around here. And we read about 160, 165 there. That limit assembly is right above the heat exchanger, so it would have been a lot hotter over there. Who knows how hot it got, but it got hot enough to trip that limit. And I believe that limit is set at 190 degrees Fahrenheit, the manual reset. So, guys, if you have power outages and you have limit issues, it could be because you're losing your fan for an extended period of time when the unit is in full heating mode. That residual heat is going to come up and it's going to affect that high limit switch, no doubt. All right, something to look out for, guys.